Hey Teotiers, how you doing? This is Alex, and today we're going to take a look at Cache OS. It is a Arch-based distribution that has had modifications made at the kernel level, as well as in the CPU scheduler, uh, the way that it works. Also, a few other tweaks here and there throughout it that have been done by the developers. So let's go ahead and take a look at their web page, and then we'll dive into it on a virtual machine and actually give it a good review and see what it does. And here's their web page. It is very clean, very minimalistic looking. If you scroll down it, as you can see, there's not a lot to go to, but it's it's easy, simple to read. So a Linux distribution based on Arch. Our goal is to provide you better speed, security, and ease of use. If you click on the download here button, it will take you to their SourceForge page. Now, if you scroll down, you got features and speed in security and speed, KDE Plasma, mostly all desktop packages are compiled within it to optimization, security flags and performance improvements. Uh, kernel support, uh, uh, it also has an installer of being a, a GUI version as well as command line. GUI is the offline mode and the online mode is the UNET uh, installer. Uh, it's got its own fork of LibreOffice that they call Catchy Browser. Uh, awesome themes, uh, let's, uh, most powerful features are the Linux kernels that they've developed and modified as well. Uh, with the Calcul CPU scheduler. Uh, security, the file security feature also will be available Firefox-based browser with some security plugins. Uh, they're config with Fire Jail toggle for using all packages with Git Fire Jail profile and sandboxing as well. And also if you want to donate or support them, you can do that through here. So let's go ahead and take a look at their SourceForge page. If you look at their SourceForge page, uh, you can download it right here. You can see that it was started in uh, March of this year. Uh, also, um, it supports BTRFS, ZFH, EXT4, XFS, and F2FS. The desktop environments that you can download through the online uh, installer is going to be KDE Plasma, Q Qtfish, i3, GNOME, Openbox, Wayfire, LXQT, BSPWM, Kofuku, which is uh, Bliss in Japanese, uh, and also XFCE. Uh, if you want, like I said, you have to, to do those, you have to do them through their online installer when you do their Calamaris. It does use Calamaris as their offline installer, and the offline mode will install GNOME. So that's a look at their documentation. It's also a look at their web page. So we'll, we'll go ahead and we'll spin this up in a virtual manager and walk through an install. Okay, so this is it spun up in a virtual machine. This is my vert manager. I've gave it eight gigs of RAM and four CPU cores. So this is what you're met with this wonderful hello uh, window or welcome window. In it, you have your documentation, you have your support section, and you have your project section for like getting involved, for also helping with development and donating. Uh, let's go ahead and click launch install. Now here you have two choices. You have the offline and online. Offline is going to download the basic one, which is the ISO, which is based off of the, it's the GNOME version. The online one will allow you to select the other different desktops like KDE, Wayfire, et cetera, et cetera. We're just gonna go ahead and do the offline because it's just faster and easier to do it this way. When you click on it, it should launch the Calamari's installer, which it does. And here it is. Uh, American English is my language, so I'm going to select that. I'm going to hit next on that one. Then all of a sudden, Los Angeles. Yep, I'm on the West Coast. So we're going to click that. Uh, English is my default keyboard. We're going to click next on that. We're going to erase the entire disk. We're going to give it a swap, no hibernate, and we're going to switch to the ButterFS. We're going to click next for that one. Now we're going to set up our user, which is going to be very easy. And we're going to give it a top secret password that even NASA engineers can't crack. I'm going to click next. This is our overall summary of what it's going to do. We're going to hit install. We're going to install now and away we go. So I'm going to pause the video now. And when it is finished installing, we'll come back. Okay. And it is done installing. That took about 
three to four minutes, believe it or not. It was very quick. So let's go ahead and click done. <clears throat> and it's going to restart. And we are going to boot an existing OS. Catch your Linux OS. And here it is. Yep, that is us. Click enter. Then I gotta set my display red settings. Room twenty by ten eighty. We're gonna click apply. Keep changes, and there we have it. That in a nutshell is it. So this is what you're what you're greeted with right here. This is a nice welcome uh window here uh you got area for documentation where you can read up on release info the readme the wiki uh support so you got forum software mailing lists and of course project if you want to get involved or donate you can now the two new buttons that were added to the welcome window uh as compared to uh what was in the other uh uh live live uh usb are the apps and tweaks and the install apps so if we click on the apps and tweaks it gives us this where you can enable uh the sync daemon also the system md oomd uh app armor uh and and i see is already uh cpp is already enabled you can do system update remove the db database lock you can reinstall packages you can clear the package cache you could also refresh your uh uh, AUR key rings or your uh, sorry arch key rings and also remove orphan packages uh, also they've got their own cache EOS package installer and their kernel manager <clears throat> that you can access through there excuse me if you go to install apps this is their app installer so you could uh, click down here and of course it gives you different things that you could install under brave ungoogled chromium chromium firefox midori etc 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 in all these different categories there's different apps like in video and movies you've got parole player which is already installed as you can see vlc you could add uh, so if you want to change up you can do that as well as you can probably go to the aur once you install an aur helper like yay or what have you in here uh to help you with that so we'll go ahead and close out of that and this is the desktop so if you click on here which will show you the applications that are already installed, which as you can see, there's not a whole lot, just the uh, the Parole Media Player, uh, LFTP, uh, which is a FTP uh, client, uh, the QT Assistant Designer, Linguist, and QD Bus Viewer. Under Accessories, you've got your oh, Screenshot Calculator, Icon Browser, and also a Text Editor, as well as you have Vim as well. Uh, you have GNOME disks, you have tweaks in, in here, and calculator. Oops. Was not expecting that. Okay, there, that was seems to be a bit of a glitch. Uh, under system tools, if you click on it, you have the QT uh, video camera uh, tools. Sorry, I'm a little thrown on that. The SSH servers, uh, the kernel manager, their hello window, Octopi they have installed, Alacrity's their their terminal uh, of of install, uh, Kavanta manager, Yad settings, uh, their package installer, uh, Fish settings, uh, or Fish, and then all the settings manager, QT5 settings, and Octopi cache cleaner. So that was very interesting. So let's go ahead and launch their cache browser and see what it looks like. Uh, once again, it's a fork of the Libre Wolf uh, with security enhancements in, uh, in play already. And this is what you're greeted with, the dark reader. So clear URL add-ons, also canvas blocker, U origin block so they can block ads and such. So this is what it looks like. Of course, if you go here, you've got different 
settings that you can go to to do different things. Privacy and security is where they've got some of their stuff that they've probably embedded into it. I uh, don't see it, but uh, just your standard regular stuff that comes with LibreOffice. So in a nutshell, that's it. Uh, if you click on applications, as you can see, there's not a lot actually installed out of the box. So that's what makes it kind of lightweight. Uh, files is their default file manager. It's your standard file man file explorer manager, whatever you want to call it. Uh, it's got your usual uh, locations on the left hand panel, and then you've got your it opens up to your home directory right off the right off the cuff. So, uh, at any instance, that is a look at Cache OS. Uh, it's new, so it has like that whole restart bug. That was kind of a weird thing. I don't know why it did that, but it's 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 got some bugs that they're going to be you know uh, fixed or being fixed. They're probably going to be fixed once they're reported. I'm going to report that bug to them. But at any instance, uh, you know, it, use it with caution. But it's definitely an up and coming one. If they can get the CPU handles, it is fast. It is snappy. Uh, if they can get the uh, the CPU handlers to to work better and less you know, like crashy like that was then by all means i could see something po potential in this but until then i would approach with caution it does have a few bugs as i said uh but if it's something you're willing to play around with you know maybe kind of see if you could tweak it you know in their tweaking uh software that they have for the kernel versions you know there you can you can click on that and the, through the hello menu and you can actually tweak different parts of the kernel uh in that tool so i would load it into a virtual manager as i did kind of play around with it see what you can do if you can get it nice and stable enough running for you then hey enjoy it uh up until then you know if you decide to do that please uh Keep us posted on that through the comments on this video. Also, if you have any thoughts or anything you want to say about this because you've already used it, maybe you've already made some tweaks, comment down below. Also, like, share, and subscribe. Also, you can visit us on all our social media platforms. We're on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and over at Patreon.com. Also, if you want to buy any nice branded gear for the channel, uh, you can visit us at the linuxtube.shop. Uh, very affordable prices over there. It also, once again, it helps support this channel. So if you believe in what we're doing, please visit us there as well, as well as our Patreon page. Uh, guys, thank you so much. Also, we've reached 100 subscribers. That's a milestone in the channel's history. So we thank you guys and your friends and anybody that you've recommended for subscribing. We really appreciate it. You guys continue to have a wonderful day and keep on Lennoxing.